about the integrity of God's word. Integrity in the dictionary says whole and undivided. His commandments, the boundaries of his protection, his protection, the guarantee of his blessings. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word, never. In fact, it comes with guaranteed performance. It never changes, it's steadfast, it is firm, secure, and non-negotiable. The standard procedure of our operation may be in ministry, may be in the marketplace, and our home. It is part of our welcome orientation packet. It's the governing institution of your life and mine. And it is part of what is required of us. The Lord your God requires of you to fear the Lord, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve him, and to keep his commandments and his statutes for your good. You don't have to fast, you don't have to please, you just obey. It is the mark of heaven. In the book of, uh, in the Bible it says that you need to fix these words in your heart, in your minds. You tie them at a symbol of your hands. You bind them in your foreheads. You teach this to your children when you sit, when you walk, when you lie down, and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates. We need to have the Ten Commandments as an operation standard operating procedure in our home, in our businesses, in our marketplace, in our ministry, and our lifestyle. For the last 40 plus years in my walk with the Lord, I check in this morning and there are no changes, there are no additions, and there's no commentary needed. <laughs> it is still the same, integrity of his word. It is, I always call it, the 666 proof free insurance policy. Let our foreheads be marked, let our hands be marked, the way we think and we, the way we do business. It is a requirement of love relationship. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's written in the finger of God. It is his dream, he said, that I will make a covenant with my people. I will pour my commandments in their minds and write them in their hearts. It's our identifying mark. What if where you are today and what you're doing today is not what God wants you to do and it's not where God wants you to be? When do you want to know? When do you want to know before you and I are going to hear a devastating declaration that says, get away from me, you who break God's laws, I do not know you. You see, heaven is heavily vetted. You shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and observe them so that the land in which I bring to you to settle in, the land here on earth and the land there in heaven, may not vomit you out. The length of our days and our longevity and our influence and our staying power, access, is determined in how well we follow his commandments. It's our report card. We have successful businesses. We have exploding ministries. The United States of America, 80 to 85 percent professing Christian nation. And our culture is not Christian. We have broken lives, broken homes, broken marriages, and I'm not talking about the world and our lifestyle matches just like the world. The fall of the nation of Sodom was not because of the wicked, it was because of men and women of God with no integrity. When we find our lives and our businesses and our marriages without integrity, it is a waste of time. There was 10 negotiated number in the heavenly intercession by his uncle Abraham. And Lot could not give nine more. There's no compliance at the gates of the city. Lot was a businessman. The Bible says at sundown he's still at the gates of the city, rubbing elbows with who's who. 
but his business burned to the ground. His wife had another idea, looking back. His son-in-law thinks that he's a joke, and his daughters committed incest with him. Go ye to the world and occupy. Who says the gates? We need to go to the process and get process the gates of our city and give eviction notice to the current tenants today. We need to be aggressive in taking over. We need to remove, replace, and infiltrate and influence. Yerish. The Lord told me when he talked to me to start a business. I just want to be a, a wife of a doctor, spend all his money, and sip tea. <laughs> The Lord told me, this is my dream for you. And because it is mine, I will fund it. I will go before you to open the double doors of success and prosperity so that the gates, your influence, will not be shut. But remember, we have a covenant. You have a contract with me, Mila, and you have a constitution to follow in your operation. Because the Lord said, those who keep the demands of his covenant, those who carefully follow the terms of this covenant, and those who carefully follow all the commandments, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all of his commands, the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All of these blessings will follow and overtake you. You will be always at the top, never at the bottom. He will bless the work of your hands. He will bless your coming and going, bless the fruit of your womb. You shall lend and not borrow. <clears throat> I will be an enemy to your enemy, an adversary to your adversary. And every place that the sole of your foot shall step on shall be yours. Well, are we there yet? So today, as I present this to you, we're going to learn the offer, the guarantee, the protection, and the reward of this commandment. As a healthcare consultant for how many years, <clears throat> I'm part of the negotiating contract, millions of dollars. But when I see this, I see, I say this offer is too good to turn down. So I say, where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Because it is a spiritual malpractice, my brothers and sisters. What right do you have to speak the words of my laws? How dare you speak the words of my covenant? You know, in healthcare, my husband is a doctor, and uh, the, a lot of the doctors uh, work the first two months to pay for their malpractice insurance. We have a lot of teachers and preachers today that probably should lose their mm -hmm. license. Because God says, what right do you have to presume to speak for me? and claim my covenant promises as yours. For you have hated my instructions, disregarded my words, throwing them away as worthless. You agree, you support, you stand, and you vote for men and women who directly violates my commandments. But now I am going to bring you out to court and I will bring these charges against you. In court, we will find out that we are void of power to decree and to declare. We will be void of power to oppose, to overrule, to petition the court, to give a restraining order against our enemy. Because the Bible says, the one who turns away his ear from hearing my law, even his prayer is an abomination. It's a standard It's a standard operating is the standard operating procedure, the Ten Commandments. So the Lord asked me to write a book about my experience and my journey in a marketplace. So I want to talk to you the first commandment, the first four of these commandments. First, we need to be established in our mindset and in our mind that God, heaven demands all. 
It is an insult to the living God to find himself on the, on the same altar with your number two and your number three. He did not ask to be number one. He asked to be all. He has no equal. He has no rival. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. I am is my name, and this will be my name forever. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless who takes his name in vain. The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The world today, to be politically correct, is shoving down our throat the gods of the world that's trying to infiltrate your life and mine. And yet Abraham, Abraham never heard of it. Isaac does not recognize it. And Jacob doesn't want to be near it. My name is I Am, our family name, our father's reputation. He is Jehovah Jealous, <laughs> the great iconoclast, the one who breaks idols. Do not worship any other God for the Lord, whose name is Jealous. Now you know another name of God. Whose name is Jealous, he's the Jealous God. The victorious king demands exclusive worship, no spiritual prostitution allowed because he wants to protect us from the devastating results of counterfeit worship. He demands a face-to-face -face divine romance, no remote control, please. It's a closed door, secret place, 20 by 20 cubits. The Holy of Holies, just you and him. A closed door relationship. Because he did not ask you and me for a date, he asked you and me to marry him. So, <clears throat> number five, standard operating procedure, Sabbath rest. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Rest is a command, it's not an option. There is a warning on all of us when God called us from the uh, or our mother's womb, it says, warning will self-destruct if they will not rest. You see, it breaks the superstar syndrome in our churches, in our ministry, and in the marketplace. God says, be still, I know, hear my voice, and enter my rest. Sabbath is the atmosphere of his reign and his sovereignty. It's a place of surrender, where you and I can rest and receive from his majesty his provision, his protection, and his presence. It's a place where we respond and say, let it be according to your word. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. I said, it is in heaven, not my will, but yours be done. And the peace of God that surpasses understanding will come. Because he said, peace I live with you, peace I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Rest is the best compliment you and I can give Father Today, hear his voice and enter into Sabbath rest. God is saying to you and I, prop your feet, and I will make your enemies your footstool. It's a divine convergence of shalom peace. It says, finally, the two has now become one. Honor. The cry of creation, te me, value me. It's a posture of royalty. It's a walk of royals, children of the king. Honor one another above yourselves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor your leaders, the emperor. Guilty. Business giants always stand tall because the doors of opportunity will open wide for those who honors. I always say, honor is a seed you plant yeah. to reap favor, and favor will open the doors for you. Seven, that's God calling. <laughs> Seven is valuable, important, permanent marriage covenant. It's a death warrant. It comes with a death warrant. You shall not commit adultery. In my business practice, Philippines and here in my offices, I demand that my marriage staff wear a wedding ring. If you don't want to work with me, you don't have to. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> 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 
But God came to Abimelech on a dream one night and he said, you're a dead man. You're good as dead, Abimelech. Because the woman you've taken, she's a married woman. She is another man's wife. It comes with a warning. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind. And I always tell, tell this to my million dollar board uh, members when you have a meeting. I say, just watch it. This wind will take your wealth, your health, and including your hair. <laughs> <laughs> so be on guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Because I expect godly offspring from you. Oops, I thought that I'll get married so I can be happy. Well, God has another idea. I want godly offspring from you. The one, the Bible says, is the one who left the partner of their youth. The one who ignored the covenant they made with God. Simple translation. Number eight. Masterpiece creation hands off tampering and distorting of our master plan of God. His creation is always original because it's conformed to the image of his son. Let us make man in our image, <clears throat> male and female. Got that? The spirit of death has covered and hovered our nation, thou shalt not murder. Blessings from the womb has been tampered with. He who has bloody hands has no access. The Bible says those who does these things, they're serving of death. Not only those who does it, but those who approves and practice them. We are wonderfully, fearfully created. This is not just for women rights. This is not for political gain. It's one of a kind, created for his pleasure. It is high treason, and it's a high crime against the Almighty when you and I tamper with this masterpiece. Number nine, we go to heavenly audit. It's a performance evaluation of our talents, of our gifts, of our finances. So if you do not have, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with two riches souls? Being entrusted with handling worldly goods is a precursor of being entrusted with souls. If we are failing in our report card with soul winning, then we need to do a financial audit, how we earned it and how we spend it. Thou shalt not steal demands a sevenfold recompense. The thief shall pay seven times. God reminded and is demanding from us that none of us will appear before him empty handed when we pray homage to the king with our gifts and our tithe. It has to be without spot, without blemish, and please don't give me, give me any lame, please. I gave you the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. When the bonus plan of overdue that we've been praying never comes, it does not apply when you and I build eight hours of substandard performance from the contract agreement watching programs while we are in the club and has nothing to do with what we paid for. It is a lame and spat and blemished offering. Because this contamination also happens when we're working while we're grumbling and murmuring because the language of murmuring is non-negotiable. It's simply not allowed. It's assigned to a destroying angel because it is a language from hell. To the thief, the door is not open for you. You shall be a witness unto me. Jesus said, it's not primarily a calling, it is a command. And you need to understand when you're going to be a witness unto me, we have a lawyer here, it's an order of the court. You follow and speak the truth, nothing but the truth. You see, that's why we have a trials of our faith. We have a date, we need to show up. And we lost a lot of cases because by default, nobody is showing up. We want direction, but we don't attend daily briefing. And when we do, we do all the talking. Because apostasy does not happen and show up first in the pews of a church. It happens first in our prayer closets. 
this gives us access to the courtroom of heaven because this is where you and I touch the scepter of the king and the king says to us, ask me anything. Number 10, our birthright, thou shalt not covet. His promise comes with guaranteed performance. Do not exchange your birthright for a bowl of soup. The offers from the world. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and it could have been the God of Esau. <clears throat> but he gave up his birthright for a bowl of soup. He is our satisfying portion after all, and I shall not want. It is a tower building void of God's wisdom when you and I ask for a bowl of soup from the world. It's a Babel building, business building, ministry building, empty of his presence. To impress, to entertain, to be politically correct is an advertising campaign of the world. It is a godless transaction. So in closing, the conclusion is, those who obey my commands, I will reveal my power to deliver. Now it has been heard, and here is the conclusion for the matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. And the result, we are all going to the world. We're going to ask our churches to open the doors of our churches the four corners of our churches, and deploy our goers to possess the gates of our city. Let our Deborahs cast out votes in our court system, the Daniels give godly counsel to our delegated leaders, our Esthers to speak before the kings, and our Joseph transforms our economic crisis to influence our culture, to landscape our future, to move, remove, relocate mountains in our lifetime that we join 85-year-old Caleb and ask, I want you to give me this mountain so you and I can have dominion over the land, the sea, and the air. And we will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. Thank you.